let's go ahead and start it out here. And by the way, we uh, we got so into the so into this one, we're gonna give everybody a bonus, right? We said top five values. Well, there's a bonus one here at the end, so make sure that you stick all the way through on this one. But uh, Kevin, do you want to start us off here on the number or one of the best values that we see in draft capital right now? Yes. Um, so one of the best values based off of draft capital that, that I'm seeing right now is, is Romeo Dobbs, right? So Romeo Dobbs started out really well last year, had the ankle injury, slowed him down a little bit. Obviously, everyone remembers, you know, the three week run that that Christian Watson had and everyone just automatically decided that he was going to be the number one for Green Bay going forward. Um, I, I'm not subscribing to that. Um, I, I like the fact that he is going late. You can pick him up in the 11th, 12th, 13th round, depending on kind of how your draft is going or whether you're starting two receivers or three receivers type type deal. But like we've said this for the last, I don't know how many weeks, Derek and I both are under the uh, belief that Romeo Dobbs will lead the Green Bay Packers in most receiving categories this season. So that makes him the number one wide receiver for this year. Might change going forward, but for this year, this is this is you know what we're looking at. And you're able to grab him late in drafts at a value. And if he pans out, awesome. You get to start him, put him in your flex, brag about to your league mates how damn smart you are and have him help propel you into the playoffs. And if he doesn't, then he's another bench player that you keep trade or cut. Like it's, there's zero risk involved with that. So I really like Romeo Dobbs as uh, one of my value picks. Absolutely. I like that one. Uh, A guy that I've got, out there as well that that we're very high on here is David Montgomery, right? Like David Montgomery is a guy that has just performed year in, year out for fantasy. He's been behind a bad offensive line in Chicago. His entire career has the upgrade. Detroit has one of the best offensive lines in all of football this year, and he gets to run behind him. And oh, by the way, I think that he's going to eat. He's going to get tons of opportunity. I really see this being a similar Jamal Williams type of role that he's going to play in Detroit there and a steal in your draft at the seventh, eighth round type of draft that you're you're putting up for David Montgomery there, and especially for a guy that can go out and put up double-digit touchdowns for you this season so absolutely love the draft capital on david montgomery yeah i like that a lot um going down to kind of the third guy on our list um very much in the same range javante williams um for the denver broncos um this is not just a homer pick guys right like we waited this long because we wanted to see what he looked like we were doing our research we had heard good reports we knew he was practicing then he got cleared for contact and and everything else and then to see is he a hundred percent back i don't know that you could say he's a hundred percent back just yet but i would tell you that he will be a hundred percent here in the beginning parts of the season and with as much as sean payton's going to want to run the ball and stay balanced on offense right not put too much on russ not put the offensive line in bad positions, make good decisions with the football, all those things. Javante Williams is going to have a really good year. And for a guy that you are able to pick up in the middle to back half of the sixth through, if you're really lucky, the middle of the seventh round, right? That's kind of the window he's going in. I have no problem grabbing him at the very beginning of the sixth and and just calling it good um so i really like williams i like what he's going to be able to do here in his denver offense and i think he at this point is a guy that provides a ton of value especially if you're waiting on running back absolutely like absolutely love that and he looked really good in the preseason game there too so uh Another guy, right? And this is one of those that folks are going to start saying that uh, that these are the uh, the hometown preference here and preferentials. But uh, Cortland Sutton's another guy that you can 
you can consistently get in the ninth, tenth round. And for a wide receiver that has slimmed down, right? He's slimmed down a little bit here. Uh, really is really great reports coming out on how he's adapted to the Sean Payton offense, um, sees himself in and sees how he's going to kind of fit into this thing. Uh, Cortland Sutton's a guy that you can pick up in the ninth, tenth round that could get all the way up into you know, back end wide receiver two, top end wide receiver three type of territory and can be a guy that's you know, very much in consideration for um, you know, spot starts and flex type of play. Yeah. So the production that we've enjoyed out of Keenan Allen the last three seasons, four seasons. That is the role that Cortland Sutton is going to play for Joe Lombardi in this offense, right? And, yes, there's going to be Sean Payton twists, which is why we're saying, you know, back end of wide receiver two. We're not claiming that he's going to jump up into wide receiver one territory. We're being realistic about this. But where the value is and the role that he's going to be playing within the offensive constructs that are now in Denver, major value there for, for Cortland Sutton. Absolutely. Um, I know I've touched on this. I'll be quick about this one. Uh, when we made this list, Zamir White. Zamir White is a value because, A, he's a, he's an absolute must handcuff if you have Josh Jacobs, if you decide to draft him. And if Josh Jacobs is not uh, in shape, right, in football shape, or if something happens, then Zamir White becomes a, you know, he becomes RB2, right? He becomes a middle-of-the-pack RB2 with flashes, right, where you might be able to see top-end running back two type numbers. Again, we're not claiming that he's going to go from zero to, you know, league hero in this instance. But in the 14th round or 13th round, where, where the, wherever that is, there is value for having a guy who you know has volume, right? There is a clear path to volume for Zamir White at this moment, and you're getting him so late that if it doesn't pan out in the first few weeks of the season, you can release him. Maybe you try and flip him to the Josh Jacobs owner. Maybe I would before I just cut him. But other than that, you just release him, and you pick up something that fits your roster better. But given what's going on in Vegas right now, there's – way too much value for him to be ignored. Absolutely. So the bonus ones that we've got, it's a running back by committee type of bonus here, but Dion Jackson, Zach Moss, the Indianapolis Colts backfield outside of Jonathan Taylor, who, you know, this could be one of those that we could see a trade happen, right? With news circulating on this one here. Um, yeah. He's still got, still got issues with the ankle, um, you know, coming off the injury type of thing. Like this is one of those that these are both guys to keep an eye on and guys that you can take, you know, last round dart throws on that could absolutely return massive value for you and be potential spot starts, flex type of starts uh, for you as well. And, you know, one of those that you, Deion Jackson's a guy most folks were sleeping on even last year when he put up RB one on a week with a Jonathan Taylor absence. Uh, one of those weeks. So both of these guys, Deion Jackson, Zach Moss, worth a, worth a very late dart throw last round, last pick of your draft. Um, yeah, these guys could do some big things, especially how things might play out here in Indianapolis. 